I don't get this one. So okay. Seems there is no epidermis here, really deep to the fascia and the subcutaneous fat. Good. Yeah. And even this low power, I can see some like black dots yes. in the septal of the fat. Yes, there are little dark dots of varying size in the fat all over in here. Lots of little dots. Yeah, and then this dot, some, I think, in the really small, tiny vessel. So this one is good for uh, calcium relaxes. Yes, very good. And once it comes into focus here, we will talk about it in a little more depth. But the, correct, this is calciphylaxis. This is a kind of uh, complicated topic, and I'm not going to go as in-depth into it as I could. But I do have another video about this online if you want to watch it that goes in more depth and has a really good examples and good pictures of like very classic findings. But this case is pretty good here. <clears throat> the very short summary is that calciphylaxis is a very bad um, a complication that occurs in some patients with end-stage renal disease, chronic renal, a chronic kidney disease, renal end-stage renal failure, basically. People that have elevated B1 and creatinine. The vast majority of cases occur in that setting. There are rare cases that can also arise in patients who are not uremic. <clears throat> okay. Clinically, these present as usually very painful ulcers that get black and, and you know, uh, look like black dead infarcted ulcers or uh, eschars is a term that's used for that. And this is due to tissue ischemia. And what happens is that as the patient's uh, end stage renal disease progresses, they begin to get dystrophic calcifications that deposit all throughout their body, but it particularly in their soft tissue, in the subcutis and around the walls of vessels. Um, uh, big vessels can have calcifications from other things, uh, incidentally, like Monkeyberg's calcific uh, stenosis um, and other and atherosclerosis. But in little tiny vessels is the most important finding here. So the clinical scenario of a renal failure patient with black eschars that are very painful usually. They are often taught as being on the abdomen, buttocks, and thighs, the kind of fattier sites of the body. But I also sometimes see them on the lower, like the distal extremities, the ankle. I've seen them at other sites too. But they are tend to be very painful. And <clears throat> it's an important thing to keep in mind anytime someone has a non-healing ulcer and they have renal disease, cr chronic renal disease. So if you're watching this and you're a medical student or a treating physician, please always keep that in mind because I find nephrologists are very familiar with this. Dermatologists are very familiar with this. Many other doctors are not as familiar with this disease. It unfortunately is a very serious disease. It's very painful and many patients die from it. So it is a diagnosis not to be made lightly, but also you don't want to miss it. Unfortunately, there's not, there's debates about how to treat it and different things have been tried, but it's a difficult disease to treat and, and is difficult. So the, the problem is, is that you can find little calcifications in the subcutis or the dermis incidentally in, in people, particularly in older people on the legs. And, um, and so what exactly is enough to call calciphylaxis is somewhat subjective and a matter of debate. I personally feel that I have a kind of a lower threshold for calling it. Uh, versus some other colleagues in pathology I feel that who expect to see more but usually what I like to see is if I have the skin surface I want to see ischemic necrosis or some evidence of you know acute epidermal infarction and or proliferation of vessels in the dermis that are a sign of chronic progressive ischemia and again my other video goes into that and shows some examples and then the, to me, the gold standard finding is that we have the clinical scenario like I just described to you and that microscopically we see small fragments of calcification in the walls of tiny little vessels in the subcutis. To me, that's the best finding. You will also often see little granular calcifications in between the subcutaneous adipocytes. You may see them also in the fibrous septa. You can also see a uh, little uh, wiry um, uh, elastic fibers that are calcified that look kind of like pseudoxanthoma elasticum, PXE, but you can see those kind of uh, calcified elastic fibers incidentally in people who do not have calciphylaxis too. So that, that by itself to me is not enough to, to call calciphylaxis. I really want to see it in the vessels. A lot of times the little vessels will get like a donut ring <clears throat> of calcification around them. I find, to me, I find that pretty specific. Um, little tiny vessels do not tend to get a lot of calcium deposits in other conditions in my experience. I don't see calcium deposits around tiny vessels in, say, 
atherosclerosis or Monkeyberg's calcific stenosis is usually in in larger kind of uh, muscular arterioles or, or, or small arteries and medium arteries, not in a little tiny vessel. So I'm looking here when this comes into focus to try to find better vessels here. Also, there's usually going to be fat necrosis. There may be hemorrhage. There may be fibrin thrombi in vessel lumens. So that's what happens is as the calcium deposits get put down, the vessels start to thrombose. They get blocked off and you get ischemia that leads to infarction of the skin and these very painful uh, black eschar-like uh, skin infarcts that ulcerate. And uh, again, a very serious disease. Um, that is potentially life-threatening. And in my other video online on YouTube, I've, to my surprise, the video is aimed at um, pathologists mainly, but I've had multiple uh, patient family members come and comment there that they lost a loved one to calciphylaxis and that it was a miserable, terrible disease. So I really feel for those people, and um, and I feel that this is an under-recognized disease in pathology, and I, I want to make sure that everyone's aware of it uh, because it is a very serious and very morbid and potentially fatal disease. So um, in any case, uh, calciphylaxis, I'm sorry I can't get the scan to come into as good a focus, but um, <clears throat> that one vessel that we showed earlier was pretty good. And all these little calcifications here fit very well for it in the right clinical context. But you have to have the right clinical context. Oh, here's, a, here's one, too. Look at this. See, there's a little tiny vessel lumen in the middle. And then this is a ring of calcium around the outside. And the calcium's fragmenting and falling apart. This is much more florid. Some cases are very subtle and only a very focal calcification. If though, if you get a case like that where the clinical is suspicious um, for calciphylaxis and you get a little punch biopsy, you know, consider doing deeper levels. Consider doing a von Casa stain, which will um, highlight the calcium and turn it a dark brown, uh, brownish black kind of color. And so I find that in some cases you need to to use a von Casa stain in deeper levels. And also, um, you need to see subcutis. If you get a biopsy that just shows dermis, you know, still, you can try the stain, the von Casa and the deeper levels. But when I sign that out, if the clinical appearance uh, looks suspicious for calciphylaxis or the clinic, clinical, the submitting doctor tells me they are, want to rule out calciphylaxis and my biopsy shows very little subcutis, I will put in the comment, I don't see calcification in vessels here, but there is minimal subcutis present and you need to go back and do a deeper biopsy. Ideally, a big wedge or chunk of fat like this is the best uh, way uh, to get a diagnosis uh, or to rule out calciphylaxis. Get a big chunk of fat, I, I'm usually right under the eschar, um, um, or at the edge of the eschar where you get some viable tissue and some dead tissue, and then get all the way down to the fat. So a big ellipse or a nodule of fat taken out um, is the best way. But if you can't do that, a double punch or telescoping punch biopsy can also work, although you get less tissue. So it's possible that you might not be able to see the calcifications. They're not always this diffuse. So in that case, you can punch the dermis, you know, snip that out and then punch down again into the biopsy hole and push down deeply into the fat to get that second piece of fat out. But the best is to get a big piece like this. So anyway, I, I, I can never talk shortly about this. I'm sorry, I tried to, but I failed. So um, this is calciphylaxis, and I'm sorry, we can't get it in more focus than that, but I'll put a link uh, down in the video description uh, so you can go and see that other video that has better pictures that are more in focus.